Mary in uh, contrast color correction. Uh, this is your first press of an image that you're working on. And um, uh, just to start off, let's go ahead and load up the project file and uh, reconnect the, uh, the media so that we can get working. So what I'll do is go to File in Color, Open, and I'm going to go ahead and select um, the project file. So uh, the project file you're going to be working with on the assignment this week is already um, on the uh, project drive. Uh, teacher storage and it's what we worked with in class um, so what you're going to open up is the project file so I'm going to go to where I have mine and it's going to it's going to be primary grading color project and you'll notice that the media folder is in that same folder so I'm going to select this I'm going to click open all right I've got it open but you'll notice that no media is connected to the project file so what I got to do is connect media so I'll go up here go to file reconnect media and all I'm going to do is go up to that same place in that same um, same location in the media project uh, courses compression color book files and I'm just going to select the folder and click choose and all right, now we're all connected. You should see this before you continue on. And you'll notice that we have uh, six clips. And this is, we're just going to use this as a, uh, what you're going to be doing is go ahead and color correct the, just the contrast. Don't worry about the color correction just yet. Let's just focus on the contrast of all of these clips. That's what I want you to turn in. Um, what you can do is just do your work and turn in your project file and I'll reconnect it to the media. You don't have to give me the media back. But uh, what I want you to do is use the color or the contrast correction guide as a, as, a, uh, as a way to sort of step through each of these clips and correct them for just contrast in order to get the contrast in the right place. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and step through and look at just the primary in. As we've looked at before, these are your three color wheels for shadow, midtone, and highlight. All we're going to focus on is the contrast slider here for each of these um, aspects of the image. And we'll also look at this Luma curve here um, if we're not getting the results we need by adjusting the um, midtones, shadows, and highlights, just the contrast here. So let's just start with this first image. Let's remember that we have a very quick way of going about doing this, and that is just using auto balance. And let's go ahead and do that and, and look at what the changes are. Now, if we look at this image, we look at our waveform monitor scope here, it's going to show us where our exposure is, is currently. Right now, it's showing that uh, the black point is pretty close to zero, but the white point doesn't get you know, much above 60. Here, we've got a, a few traces above 60 here. Uh, but we can improve just the overall contrast by uh, expanding our exposure all the way from 0 to 100. And that's what's going to happen when we hit this auto, auto balance. So I'm going to hit auto balance over here. And you'll notice that it brought that one little trace all the way up to 100. And it seemed to have left the black point pretty much where it was, right around 5%. 5% is a good number. We don't necessarily always want to go all the way down to zero because at zero there is no information in the shadow area. We want to maintain as much detail as we can. Um, let's go ahead and, uh, you know, we'll use this as a starting point to see exactly uh, if we were to do this manually how we'd get the same result. So I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to go reset primary in. And that's going to take us back to where we were before. Okay. And now let's try to get that same adjustment by adjusting our contrast sliders up here. So uh, the first thing we do is start with our black point. And we'll notice that our black point is already where we want it to be. So next thing we want to do is increase the highlight up to um, 100%. So let's look at this little trace right here. And that is what we want to touch the 100. So let's go to our contrast slider here and our highlight. And we're going to just click in this bar anywhere and drag up 
keep dragging up until we get that one trace just right at 100%. There we are. And we'll notice that um, the contrast looks a whole lot better. Now, uh, the next thing that we want to do for this image is, you know, how do we like the midtones? Now, we'll notice that the midtones span more or less from 80 all the way down to uh, zero or more or less 5%. If we wanted to, we could probably crush this these blacks a little bit further uh, so that it gets to zero. And um, I'm going to drag this the contrast slider for the for the shadow area a little bit further down just to put a little bit more contrast in there. And already this image is looking a lot better. Now, let's take this midtones and slide it up a little bit slide it down a little bit and you can kind of see how that's affecting the image now this is where we are you know making some aesthetic decisions subjective decisions about how we want our image to look what's going to look better what's going to look worse um, where do we want the image what's going to look balanced and that's just a matter of preference obviously if we dr drag it way up here it's starting to look pretty washed out if we drag it too far down our white point's staying pretty close to where it was, but it's starting to look a little dark. So what we want is something right in the middle. And um, obviously, uh, because this is the, the clock face is framed in the shot, we'd look at the script and we'd try to determine or talk to the cinematographer, talk to the director, and find out what where's our focus need to be. Just framing alone, it seems to be right here at this clock face to see what time it is. And uh, so we, that's kind of where we want to, you know, base our exposure. So I'm going to drag this midpoint until I see something that, you know, shows me a nice balance. I still have detail in the shadow areas. There's some detail still down in here. And uh, things are looking pretty good. Um, if I do the auto balance, you'll notice that it... it changes the color it cools the um, um, the image down quite a bit and we don't want to worry about color correction just yet and I don't think this is quite what we're looking for this doesn't have that antique look a warmer tone to the colors is kind of what we what we want and and more or less that's what was in the original exposure if I hit undo I can see that it's got those warmer tones in there and I imagine that's more what the cinematographer was going for you can never assume you always want to find out uh, let's step down to the next image here and um, I'm waiting for the computer ah okay let's look at this image now this image has a letterbox burned in top and bottom so there is absolute black already in the image if you'll notice in your waveform monitor that you'll have the, these traces right here right at the bottom of zero that's telling you that there's already something um, totally black in the image hitting auto balance watch doesn't really do anything for the contrast in this image because it raises the white point a, a little bit but the black point doesn't move anywhere and we end up having this washed out image we're going to have to do this manually so i'm going to reset the primary in and what i'm going to do is begin with a black point and i'm going to drag this i'm going to look at this and i'm going to say this is probably where i want to you know um, where i want the black point uh, to be focused on and bring that down and that probably corresponds to his hair right here and if I look at this image how much detail is really here how far can I bring this down do I really need to see a lot of detail in his hair um, that's you know I, I only need to bring this contrast down as far as I feel is necessary that looks pretty good to me if I bring it all the way down to black it starts to look uh, up here that his hair is bleeding into the black space above and that's not necessarily a good thing that's probably going too far I want to bring it up just a little bit and that's improved the contrast tremendously if I look at the white point next after I've set the black point I'll look at the white point and I'm gonna to want to figure out well what is the brightest part of this image and uh, is it a highlight is it a light source how white should that be <clears throat> this looks like indirect lighting here on this white door frame <clears throat> and if i go to the white point over here and drag the contrast up to where it touches 
it starts looking a bit washed out to me. And this this image here, uh, I would think, uh, is, uh, you know, that's just too much. I got some highlights on the door frame and sort of the bevel on this door. Um, I think that's just too much, too much contrast. Um, if um, <clears throat> you're going to match this up with another shot, uh, you might want to, you know, make some decisions about, you know, what is the brightest point in each of these shots. I think that's too much. I'm going to undo this, and I'm probably going to leave it right about here. This is look. This looks pretty good to me. The next thing I want to determine is the midpoint. Where? Let's just go ahead and drag this midpoint around a little bit, and you'll notice that as I drag the midpoint down a little bit, it's increasing the contrast and it's bringing this black point down where I didn't really want it to go. So if I wanted to make this adjustment to the midtone, I've got to go back to my shadows and tr drag this back up until I start seeing a little bit of um, brightening up, you know, so that his hairline isn't totally black. Now his eyeball is probably going to be the darkest point and that's fine. It's not touching the uh, letterbox up here and this is looking a lot better. Now, this automatically looks like a lot more contrast than we had before, but we didn't really you know, change too much of the image. We didn't do any major adjustments to it. Let's go ahead and go to the next shot, and this one's gonna be a little bit more challenging. Now, this got a green tint to it, and we're not gonna really mess with color just yet. All we wanna focus on first is the contrast, okay? So uh, let's look at our waveform monitor and see exactly where uh, our white and black points lie. Our black point seems to be right here, just above 10%. We've got some room to go, but that is a really nice exposure because above 10%, our shadow areas are gonna have some detail in them. If we expose this thing, uh, expose, expose this image, and we've got a black point that's already below 10%, or 5% in this case, no, that's 10%. Anything below that, and we're going to start losing detail in that area very, very quickly. That's why um, you'll see a lot of this, uh, you know, cine styles in your camera creating these really gray images. What it's really doing is exposing the camera so that the black point is right around 80%. And then oftentimes, the, or I'm sorry, the white point is below 80% and the black point is above 10, somewhere around 15 and even 20% because when the camera's exposed there, you're guaranteed to have some detail in, the, in those areas if there's illumination there and there's any detail to capture. Then in post, I can start stretching this image. I can bring the black point down. I can bring those highlights up and still have that detail in the image. That's the logic behind those kinds of exposures. So let's go ahead and start with the black point. Let's drag this down a bit to where um, we get somewhere just around 5%. Okay, that's, you know, that, that punches it up quite a bit right, right there. Now, the next thing we wanna do is look at the highlights. Now, where are the brightest points in this image? Well, we got some clouds in the sky here, and those are gonna have some details in them. We don't wanna take the white points so far up that we lose details in these clouds or burn out the sky in any particular way. We also have direct sunlight on his back here, and, and uh, yep, that has some detail in it. We wanna make sure not to lose that. And uh, we've got this white truck coming by and we can see that that's in direct sunlight as well. So let's go ahead and drag this white point up until we you know, create what looks like as much contrast without losing detail. As we drag this up, it's starting to look pretty washed, you know, it's pretty high contrast right here. Now, this is where story comes into figuring out what are the best choices to make. Is it supposed to be high contrast, edgy? Is there supposed to be tension in this scene? Is it hot? Is it uncomfortable? I mean, there's lots of adjectives we can try to put to what's going on in this moment to help us decide how to make the image look. So let's go ahead and drag this down a little bit, this midpoint down somewhere um, right there. That sounds good or looks good. If I want more mid-tone, if I want to bring the exposure in here up a bit or under here, what I can do is, is I can drag this mid-tone up to, to, to increase overall exposure. Next, what I want to do is bring those blacks back down. So 
So I'm going to drag this down a little bit. Okay. And then if I'm feeling like this, like this cloud up here is a little too overexposed, I can go to my white point and I can drag this white point back down. Whenever I move the midtones up, that's going to push my highlights up as well. So I need to bring it back down. If I move my, and I'll also have to raise my shadows, you know, raise my shadows up because when I move the midtone, it's going to shift both my shadow and my highlight. So I started with my shadow and my highlight. And then when, as I push my midtones around, I need to correct the shadow and highlight so I get that black point and that white point where I initially wanted it. So I can, you know, drag this white point down and bring those highlights down a little bit. And I'm, it's starting, it, it still looks pretty, um, um, pretty high contrast, but I'm still maintaining those midtones, some detail in those midtones without crushing my midtones too much. This is looking a lot better. If I hit Control G, I can I can turn this correction on and off, so I can kind of see where I started and see where I ended up. <clears throat> You'll also notice that because we're working in RGB space, red, green, and blue. When I when I start pushing the contrast, I'm pushing red, green, and blue all at the same time. So as I move the contrast up, I'm also increasing the saturation some. Watch, look at the green tint and look how it shifts as I turn this on and off. Here, it doesn't look so green. As I push the contrast, it looks greener. Um, and this is the case in any image I'm working with. I'm going to um, increase the or the saturation of the colors a little bit as I push the contrast. Um, so it's important to start with your contrast first before you start going into any color correction. Uh, that's the logic there. Next, let's go down to the next image and let's look at this one. Look at my waveform monitor and I'm looking at, you know, here's the general exposure. I've got uh, my black point right there, right at 10%, and I've got my white point just a little bit above 80%. Uh, that's how this image was exposed, giving us some latitude when it comes to color correction. Um, I'm, what I think I'm going to do here is uh, let's drop the black point a little bit just to punch up the blacks just give it a little bit more contrast and you'll notice that out here in this window we have clearly a white point that is washed out a bit. We're not seeing much detail here. Now some of this is because it's not quite in focus, but it does have some color to it. Now if this was really overexposed, then this would be just plain white. And when you have just a solid white exposure in something like this, that means there is zero detail there and there's not much I can do with it. But because I'm looking down here, I can see that I'm really only at 80% of my exposure, then I have some color information here and I can push that a little bit. And I'm gonna to wanna to bring that up uh, closer to 100%. So I'm gonna to go to my highlight and I'm gonna click in here and I'm gonna drag this up. And if I go all the way to 100%, you'll notice that the color starts to leach out of those highlights and uh, the detail starts to disappear. Is that what I want? No, I want to keep as much of that detail as possible. So I might want to just bump this up just a little bit. Now, how can I get some more contrast in here um, if, I, if that's what I'm looking for? This is, you know, I, I've got some direct key lighting here on the side of his face, and the rest of it is fairly uniform, diffuse lighting. So uh, just naturally, this is going to have a more um, moderate exposure, not a lot of contrast in it. But I can push things around a little bit. So let's drag this midtones down a little bit. I've, since I dragged the midtones down, I'm going to have to raise my white point a little bit to get back to where I was. And I'm going to probably raise my black point just a little bit because I, uh, I move, as I move my midtones down, I'm also increasing my shadow. So I'm going to bring that up. And all that's really doing is, where do I want these midtones? How do I want to shift these midtones? Let's do something extreme so you can really see what's going on here. I'm going to drag these midtones way, way down. And I'm going to bring that black point up a little bit until we get, you know, somewhere around 5%. And then I'm going to drag my white point up 
and stretch those up until we get something uh, where this where our highlights are back where they used to be. Now, compared to the original image, you know, our white point is not shifting that much. It's maybe a little bit brighter. Let me go ahead and let me drag this white point down to closer to where it was originally, a little bit above 80%. So as I turn it on and off, you can see that my white point is not really changing that much. Let me drag my black point up to where it was originally. And you'll notice that in the shadow area, like in this collar here, it's not changing that much. But the image is definitely looks different. because my mid-tone exposure is moving around in the image. I'm lowering the overall mid-tone exposure. Um, is that what I want to do? Nah, doesn't look, doesn't look that great. So I'm going to bring this back up. I like my mid-tones to be, you know, something that looks um, a little bit closer to what I, I imagine it should. Um, how do I know what's right? Well, first, trust your eye, what looks good. And second, try to incorporate as much of the narrative elements as possible. What's the scene about? What's the mood? Um, what's the shot before and after look like so I can match them up? You know, you might have a couple of shots in this sequence that uh, really limit your options. And I would probably go and, and correct the contrast in the more problematic images or, you know, edits first so that it can really show you how far you can go with the other stuff. This is a fairly well exposed image. I can do a lot with this one. I probably want to go to the more problematic ones first and then match that with the other images until I find something that has a nice even exposure with, um, you know, the right kind of uh, mid-tone uh, that I feel like is putting the image, you know, the focus in the right place. Now, obviously, his face is probably the narrative focus in this shot. It's framed that way. So um, we're not talking about color correction, but um, I can probably do a little bit here to try to bring some more color into his face. I like the green tone of uh, in the, the surrounding of the image, but I probably want to do some color correction at this point to bring out some more color and, and get rid of this green cast out of his face. Let's go to the next shot. Um, waiting on my computer here. Here's the next shot. Uh, this one's already been color corrected a little bit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and reset this primary in so we can see this is what the original shot looks like. It's got a green hue to it. It's going to need some color correction. But first, let's figure out some contrast issues. Now, I'm looking at my black point, and I'm not going to be able to really manipulate this too much. Um, I can bring this down maybe 5% without losing the detail in this shadow area here, like the edge of this chair. I want to keep that in the shot. Uh, so maybe what I want to do in this case, and I've got my highlights, and they look pretty dingy and gray here. And the exposure on this is, uh, you know, it seems like the white point was a little overexposed. As I start pushing this around, I'm not going to see so much color here. When you see something gray, uh, that, especially on a skin tone, that means, you know, it, it really wasn't exposed in a way that had a lot of color in it. Probably my, my best approach here is uh, lowering, let's try lowering the mid-tones a little bit just to bring the exposure down. That's going to move my black point down a little bit. And um, let's see, let's see how that affects things. So I'm going to take my midpoint. I'm going to drag that down until my black point hits something close to 5%. And now what I want to do is increase my white point until I get some of this dinginess out of here. These, this collar is going to be the brightest thing in the shot. So I've got some detail here. It was exposed with, um, you know, this still within, you know, below 100%. So if there's any detail there, we're going to maintain that pretty much all the way up to 100%. So let's go ahead and raise that until we see something we like. And... You know, anything above that, and that collar is already starting to get pretty, pretty hot. And, um, you know, so that's, you know, we still got our chair in the background here. I might be able to bring the black point down a little bit further. And 
uh, as I raise the white point, I'm pushing that, you know, I'm pushing this these midtones around a little bit too. And that's starting to look a little bit better. Now notice when I turn this off, let's let's look at his suit right here and the texture in his suit. Now this looks like it's kind of fuzzy and not as sharp as it could be. When I turn when I turn my uh, uh, my color correction or my contrast correction back on, you'll notice that it looks sharper. Looks like he's been running around and, and uh, chasing somebody in the grass here. He's got some green knees. Who knows what he's been doing in the bushes? But anyway, so we're we're looking at this and it looks it looks a lot sharper. This is just perception. We, you know, we're not changing anything in terms of the pixel. We're not adding any detail. But as we increase the contrast. We're definitely, it looks like it's getting sharper. <clears throat> so uh, let's look at this last image here. Waiting on the computer. All right, this one looks like it already has really strong contrast. I don't know that I'd go changing too much. The highlight on the fuselage of this plane looks pretty burned out, and you'll notice that. It, in, in its exposure, it was probably overexposed a little bit. There it is. It does have just a hint of color, and it's got a little yellow tone to it. And uh, we're going to um, probably do most of our work in the color correction. So in my shadow area, I've got some color. This has got the yellow hue to it. In my highlights, it's got some yellow hue to it. So when we get to color correction, this is probably where the image is going to really going to get most of its help. So <clears throat> for your exercise this week, just focus on these first four images and do some basic color correction there. The last thing I want to show you before we uh, before I end this is let's look at Luma Curve. And let's start, let's go ahead and use this image as our, you know, to get our practice with the Luma Curve here. If I'm pushing the image around with just the contrast sliders in my shadow, mid-tone, and highlight, and I'm not getting the results I want, I might go down here to this Luma Curve and try to manipulate things here. And let me reset this. There's the original image. What I want to do is, let's say I want to crush the midtones and move all of my midtones closer to the middle. What does that mean? Well, first what I do is I'm going to create a control point right here, right in the middle. That's right here at, let's say, 50%. I might want to move that down a little bit right in the middle of where my midtones are. So I can go down here and drag this this way a little bit to where I've got my midtone. Now, let's say I want to bring everything between zero and this little midpoint here at, let's say, 40%. If I want to bring all of this closer to 40, I can click down here. Okay, I've created control point in my darkest area. Let's remember that this, if I were to overlay this Luma curve line on top of my waveform, it would it would kind of cut across right here. And at the bottom corner, I'm going to be at my closer to zero in my blacks. And when I slide up here towards the uh, this side of the curve, I'm going to be up here in my highlights. So if I want to move my everything below that control point up, I'm going to drag that. I'm going to drag this curve here. And what I'll do is I'll click over here into my highlight area and drag this down because I want to move those highlights. And it looks like we're just crushing our exposure right here at this midpoint that I selected right there. Is that looking better? Oh, God, no, that's not looking too good. Well, let's reset this. Let's move in the other direction. I'm going to select my midpoint here, or at least the middle of my midtone exposure, and I'm going to drag my black point down. And what this is going to do is spread out those midtones. Notice it's spreading it out. And it's now we're getting something that looks like that skip bleach process where we're, we're increasing the contrast relative to our um, what we had before. Now, you know, we increase the highlights a little bit, we increase the darks a little bit, and we're getting, you know, a very interesting effect here. Now, is this what we're going for? Um, it depends. Some images have a, a really sort of flat exposure to them, and if we want to add contrast without pushing the blacks too far in one direction or the highlights too far in another, we can just spread out those midtones a little bit. And this Luma curve gives us quite a bit more control. I can add as many points as I want. Well, let's say I, I want to really sort of bring those highlights down a little bit so I can still have my color in here. 
And uh, I, if I shift this around, you know, I can move my exposure around until I see something I really like. Now it's hard to really, you know, qualify, you know, how good this image is looking um, because we've got some color issues that we'd have to deal with next. But um, that lumen curve gives us far more control. Here I can just, I've just got three things I can move around. This shadows is really corresponding to this point here. This highlight is really just corresponding to this point here. And this midtone is really just moving things up and down this line in a, in a linear way. This luma curve allows me to sort of bend this midtone. Okay, this luma really affects midtone more than anything else. And I can sort of bend the exposure. Um, let me pull that off. If you want to remove a point, you just take it and drag it off of the graph and it disappears. This is what's called a, an S-curve correction on my luma curve. And this often increases the relative contrast in my shot going the other direction, like we showed before, tends to decrease things. If I have a really contrasty shot, I might want to make some adjustments to my image where I'm doing um, you know, that kind of luma correction. I can even combine these things to give myself something um, um, so I can combine these things to you know to continue to push this image now this is doing quite a bit of adjustment I'm pushing these things around at this point I'm I'm really really uh, pushing this image too far you'll start seeing some noise in here and um, so, some noise in the shadow area, some noise here. It's, it's just, you know, you're going too far with the image at this point. You need to go ahead and reset, start over, and, uh, you know, do as little adjusting as possible to get the image, you know, to get the contrast that you're looking for. And uh, that's pretty much it. That's, that's um, you know, how we use this primary in to get the contrast that we're, we're hoping to get. All right, hope that was useful. Check out the uh, assignment sheet and uh, use the uh, contrast control guide as a way of sort of evaluating each image and correct each of these first four or five, these first five images and just focus on contrast. If you want to play with the cut a little bit after contrast, go, you know, be my guest, but we'll be talking about that next week.